So your program's running along, you've got your little person jumping up and down, everything looks great, and suddenly, bang, it stops working. What do we do now? Welcome to testing and debugging. One of the most important things you need to remember is that your code may not always work as you expect. And so what we need to do is to work out what is it that we actually expect our program to do and how do we know that our programs are working? We've got two approaches, testing and debugging. When we look at testing, what we want to know is, is my program doing what it should do? If I look at debugging, I want to know where the problems are so I can find them and fix them. And we refer to those problems in code as bugs, hence debugging. But let me tell you the most important thing that you need to know. If you can write code, you can fix code. It's as straightforward as that. Let's start by thinking about how we write code. And we're going to use a similar approach to explain how we test and debug code. So let's think about how we write a computer program itself. How do we start? Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to try to find a problem. And then having found the problem, we're going to think about it and then we're going to develop a solution. From our solution, we're going to write some code. And then what do we do? Well, just see if it works. Well, that's certainly one thing, but we need to think about what does works actually mean? So when we say, see if it works, what do we think is actually going to happen? In this case, works means for the problem I was trying to solve, does my program produce the right response? Now, of course, if you think about this, there are a number of places where we could have gone wrong. We could be solving the wrong problem. We could have not developed the right solution. We could have got the code wrong. So there's a lot to think about here. The first thing you've got to do is to work out what it will look like when you solve the problem successfully. So with that in mind, what you need to think about is, do you understand the problem? And do you know what the right answers look like? Because if you know what the right answers look like for certain pieces of data, then you can use these as what we call test cases. If you put a certain thing into your program, you would expect to get a certain thing out. And this is a great way to test that your program is in fact working correctly. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to develop a solution. You know what the problem is, but what's important now is that you produce a design. And that design is a clear indication of what you're going to set out to achieve and how you intend to achieve it. The important thing is that your design be so clear and understandable that another program could come in and write their code based on your design. Why is this important? If you can make a clear statement of what you're trying to achieve and the way that you're trying to achieve it, then it's going to make it much easier for you to write good code, but more importantly, it makes it very easy to check if the code that's come out is actually going to be a good solution to the problem. It helps you a great deal in both testing and debugging. A lot of people won't bother writing a design for a small piece of code, and they're missing out, especially for novice coders, because it helps them to think about how they're going to solve the problem and put it down into a simple form that's really clear before they turn it into code. If you're supervising novice coders or wanting to learn from them, the design's really handy because you can work out where things went wrong. Did they not understand the problem? Is there an error in their solution? Or is everything fine up to that point and it's actually the problem in the code that's causing you to get the wrong answer? So we need to be really clear about where the problem is and a design is a crucial bridge between the problem and the actual code itself. Makes life a lot simpler if you have a design. The most common errors you'll encounter are found in the code itself. And quite a few of these stem from problems in the code that stop it from running at all. Whether someone's made a spelling mistake, whether they've put a comma or a semicolon in the wrong place, if they haven't connected the blocks together depending on the language. Sometimes the computer can't work out what it is that you want to do, so nothing's going to happen. In this case, it's really important to read any error messages and to work out what you need to fix in order to even start the code running. Once the code is actually running, now you can have a look at it to see if it's producing the right output. If it's not producing the right output, now we've got to sit back and work out where the problem is and how we're going to fix it. And welcome to Testing 101. Hopefully, you know what the program should look like when it's running correctly. You have some test cases with expected results, and you can put those in to see if you get the right answers. 
One very handy thing is to look for special cases, particular parts of the program that will really clearly indicate that you've got the problem right. One other approach is to test it on paper. Do a dry run, sit there, plug some numbers in, see if you get the right answer. Another great way to test something to see if it's working as you expect, particularly for graphics programs, is to get somebody else to look over it. The biggest trick to debugging is just being methodical and taking things step by step to eliminate problems. You need to work out where the problem actually is. And that can be one of the trickiest problems you face. But if you actually understood the problem and done a good design, then hopefully you can eliminate both of those as the source of the problem and you can identify that it's somewhere in the code. Which part of the code is then going to help you to narrow down the problem? What is going on? Once you've worked out where it is, it's really important to isolate the problem. And what that means is you're going to have to take steps to make sure that you can see how things are changing in there so that you know why you're getting the wrong answer. It's always worth checking your design because it will help you find those parts in the code that are going wrong. And it will also give you that peace of mind that your design is right. Finally, one really useful technique is to use trace statements and see how things change. Let's have a quick look at that. Let's use a simple example in the processing programming language. You know that the variable i is being changed in your program, but at some point it reaches the wrong value. So you identify a line in your code where i is being changed, and then in order to see how it's being changed, you add trace statements. And what these are going to do using processing commands are put a record of all the changes to i as it changes without necessarily affecting the rest of the flow of your program. You can read these on the console. If you're curious about doing this in processing, you can find this information in the online reference for print. Like everything else associated with programming, your ability to test your code and your ability to find and fix bugs is going to improve with practice. It's really important that you think about the problem you're trying to solve and that you make sure you understand the solution you're building and you've got a clear design because that's going to make it so much easier for you to understand your program. And when you understand your program, you know what's going to happen when it runs. And that way, you'll have a fairly good idea when it's not working properly. We really need to think about these things because if we're working with other people who are doing code, helping them to understand where things can go wrong and why things are going wrong is going to greatly reduce their overall levels of frustration and make it as enjoyable as it can be. There are two things you need to remember. The first is that practice really helps with this, but the other one, and I'm really serious about this, is if you can write code, you can fix code. You can debug, you can find those errors, and you can stamp them out. So what are you waiting for? Get out, get coding, fix some bugs, and have fun. Thank you.